Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. In this series of videos, we're going to be building a light for a 4x4 grow space using 2020 extruded aluminum, a Meanwell 600 watt driver, and most importantly, six chilled logic pucks wired in parallel. Now, these pucks are the V1 models, and Chilled had actually sent me these to play with like months ago, like almost a year ago, and I've sort of been on hiatus since then, but I'm thinking this video is better late than never, and is a good way to get back into the swing of things, so my apologies for the delay, but I'm happy to finally do a build with these and see how they do. That being said, the nice thing is, even though there's an updated version of these pucks that's been released, they have the same footprint and will fit these heat sinks, so I'm going to try to save up and pick up six of the V2 pucks, and then I'll be able to swap them in and do a comparison against the V1 model and see what sort of improvements they offer. So this is the stage we're going to get to in this first video. We're going to build the frame, mount the driver and lights, and hang the light. In the next video, we'll wire the driver in pucks and then do some PPFD, temperature, and electrical testing. Okay, first off, let's go over all the parts we'll be using. The six of these logic pucks are, as mentioned, version 1, which uses a Samsung LM561C diode in 3000K color temperature from the S6 flux bin, of course, which is as good as it gets for the LM561Cs at this color temperature, and four 660 nanometer deep red diodes. The addition of these deep red diodes gives these lights a red shift that standard cobs can't provide and end up producing what Gromouse refers to as the double bubble spectrum. They have a nominal voltage of 48 volts and are rated for 2300 milliamps of current max. We'll be running these pucks on rapid LED 140 millimeter heat sinks, which have the proper mounting hole config for these pucks, and the driver we'll be using is a Meanwell HLG 600H48A. This is a constant voltage plus constant current driver that can be run from about 41 to 50.5 volts and is rated to supply 12 and a half amps of current, although I'm sure we'll get more out of it than that just because these drivers are awesome and are typically underrated. Since we're running a CV plus CC driver, we're going to be wiring all the pucks in parallel on this build. For the frame, we'll be using 2020 extruded aluminum and compatible hardware, including a couple different types of corner brackets, some sliding T-nuts, some hammerhead T-nuts, and M5 hex head screws. For the AC power connection, we'll be using an LLT L20 IP67 rated connector with a 16 gauge AC power cable. And on the DC side, we'll be using 18 gauge stranded wire with Wago connectors. And we'll be giving each one of these pucks its own wire run back to the driver just to keep the current lower on these 18 gauge wires. And finally, to hang this light, I'm gonna use four of these eighth inch Vivo Sun ratcheting rope hangers. Just to make it easier, I'll throw all the part numbers and where to find them in the description of the video as well. Alright, since this video is going to be focused on building the frame, I want to take a minute to go over the different parts we'll be using and how they work. This is aluminum extrusion, and you can get it in all sorts of different sizes and configurations, but I'm working with some basic 2020, which is 20mm by 20mm with 4 channels in it. There are many different ways to join these pieces of 2020 together or fasten other parts to the 2020, but we're going to use some very basic standard parts. In this build, everything will be fastened using M5 screws and either sliding T-nuts or hammerhead style T-nuts. These are what the sliding T-nuts look like. They can only be inserted at the end of the channel and can be slid down the length of it but can't be removed without sliding them all the way out. So these are nice to use for instances where you don't want any chance of the nuts coming out of the channel once it's sealed up on both sides, but the disadvantage is that you really have to plan your work because if you forget to insert them, you're going to have to disassemble your frame in order to open up one end and slide them in there, and I did this a couple times. The hammerhead style nuts, on the other hand, can be inserted or removed at any point in the channel just by placing them inside and then twisting them into place. They're rounded on two corners to allow the nut to turn clockwise as you tighten them until they hit the square corners of the nut and that holds it in place. These ones are handy for building on the fly, but they don't slide as nicely inside the channel, and there's a chance that they could pop out if you're adjusting something before you tighten them down, but once they're snugly in place, they're solid. To fasten the frame together, I'm going to be using one of these heavy-duty outside uh, corner bracket plates in each of the four corners, and for every other fastening point, I'll be using these little corner brackets. I did end up having to make some custom brackets to attach the heat sinks to my frame, and uh, I ended up buying a length of 1 inch by 1 inch by 8 inch thick aluminum angle bar, and then cut it up into little chunks using a miter saw. So after that, I drilled out the holes that I needed with a cordless drill, and a drill press would have made this a lot easier and more accurate, and even if you're a total baller like Gromouse, you could 3D print these things and save yourself a lot of work. But uh, if you're a peasant like me, you've got to be resourceful. This is what the layout's going to look like for the light. 
It'll have three pucks on either side with the driver in the middle supported by two pieces of 2020. So that means in total I'm going to need eight pieces of 2020. I ordered these as one meter pieces, which works out to about 39 and a half inches and didn't end up making any cuts. As mentioned, I had to create some of these custom brackets to mount the heat sinks to the frame, and the idea behind the ones I made is that they'll allow me to slide the sinks around if I decide that I want to change the coverage of the light. These brackets need a couple holes on one side in order to attach to the heat sink, and one hole on the other side so it can attach to a sliding T nut inside the 2020 channel. To get the spacing right for the heat sinks, I shaded a piece of paper to find the holes, and then used this template to mark these holes on my custom bracket and drilled them out. I had to make sure that these two holes also lined up with the center of the 2020 channel so that the head of the screws would land inside the channel and not bind on the outside of it. I also had to measure the top hole on the other side of the bracket as well just to ensure that the top part of the bracket lined up nicely with the sliding T-nut inside the channel. Once I had cut and drilled all my brackets it was time to mount them and I used the M3 screws that were included with the heat sinks to do this. To make sure that everything lined up, I mocked up the light on the floor without screwing anything together, and when I was happy with the mock-up, I was ready to start fastening. I'm using sliding T-nuts for the heat sinks and the driver, so I needed to preload these into the channels. I'll need three sliding T-nuts in each rail that holds the heat sinks, and two sliding T-nuts in each of the rails that holds the driver. So if you're working with this stuff, here's another reminder just to make sure that you have all your sliding nuts loaded before you screw the frame together. Now that I had all my sliding T-nuts in place, I could put my four large corner brackets down. Since I was using hammerhead nuts on the corner brackets, I could sort of preload them, so I had every one of these holes filled with an M5 screw and a hammerhead nut loosely attached on the bottom before placing the bracket down, so all I had to do is plunk it into place and start tightening the screws and all the nuts caught in the channel. The next step was to attach the heat sinks to the frame. This was just a matter of sliding the T-nuts down the rails into their approximate locations and then putting a screw in through the heatsink bracket into the T-nut. I found that it was easier to wait until I had all three heatsinks attached before I fastened the inner support rail to the frame. The placement of the sinks isn't really important at this step because they can always be moved around afterwards. Once the heat sinks were screwed down on both sides, I fastened the inner support rail into place using my small corner brackets. I also preloaded these with hammerhead nuts so I just had to line up my support rail, place the corner bracket and screw it in. Sometimes it can be tricky to preload the nut on there at the right depth, but you sort of get a feel for it after a few of them. I had initially planned to use four of these corner brackets for each of the inner heat sink support rails, but I found that I only needed to use one of them on each side and that was rigid enough. When I was happy with the first half of the light, I flipped it around, mirrored this work on the other side and was left with just the driver to mount. I wanted to make sure that the driver was mounted dead center on the light in order to balance it as best as possible, and to do this, I measured the rail to find center, then I measured the mounting holes on the driver just to find out how far I had to offset my two rails, and mark this on the frame. I mocked this up with the driver just to make sure the holes aligned. I marked these same measurements on the other side of the frame and got my two driver support rails in place. I preloaded them with two sliding nuts each, and then fastened each rail with two of the small corner brackets. Next, I measured the rail so I could center the driver on the other axis and got the T-nuts into place for the four mounting points. I fastened the driver down and made sure everything was nice and snug. The light was now ready for the logic pucks to be installed and I found the easiest way to line up the pucks with the heat sinks was just to make sure that the pass-through holes on both devices lined up. And if you do this, all your mounting point screws will line up too. So I attached the pucks using the M3 screws and tightened them down in a cross pattern. If you want your light to look a little bit nicer, you can buy these plastic end caps for 2020 that really clean up the ends of the rails, so I splurged the extra dollar for four of them. And one of the last things I had to do was find a way to hang this thing, so I decided that I would bolt four of those corner brackets on top to give me something to attach these ratcheting rope hangers to. And the finished product does get fairly heavy, I'd say it comes in somewhere around 25 or 30 pounds. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And in the next one, we're going to wire this beast up and run some tests on it. So stay tuned, subscribe, and we'll see you then.